so this presentation has a rather wild uh, history because, uh, yeah, it is full screen. Um, when uh, Sasha uh, like bothered, no, not bothered, uh, uh, no, 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 um, reminded me, that's the, <laughs> <laughs> that I, I, uh, I should file for a presentation. I was, after one of those eight hours brainstorming session with uh, Christina about uh, uh, Python stack proposal, and I was sick of it. <laughs> so I said, okay, anything but Python stack proposal. So my idea was, okay, it's like two months to the presentation, so I will install microOS and see how it really works and what are my experiences. And then we finish the Python stack proposal, or at least the planning part. And I don't know if Sasha or Christian said, okay, you are crazy. We have to have some information about the Python stack proposal. So this is kind of weird combination of two completely different things. And I would really uh, like, like to, that's not me. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. Okay. Uh, so I would really like to make, okay. I would really like to, uh, Time for uh, questions and answers, and uh, yeah. So, I will first speak, because I have absolutely no idea how long uh, questions and answers will be. Either uh, there will be like, yeah, we were talking about it yesterday, no, nobody cares, or we have another two hours of questions. So, we'll see. So, Python stack proposal, just to repeat what uh, Daniel was saying yesterday. Uh, TLDR, we will have Python 3.11 uh, in SP4. That's basically the most important information. And uh, RS basically is uh, open for question and answers. Um, yeah. This is, if you are interested in these uh, crazy things, I cannot imagine how many hours I spent with this uh, graph. Um, yeah. So, original plan was about uh, microOS and uh, how it is uh, useful in like real, real life for a, of a packager. To make it even more challenging, I am the guy who likes a sway. So. I don't have uh, normal micro OS, but it's uh, Richard's project, uh, Gribert, um, which is a combination of micro OS and Sway. And when I was working on, the, um, on this presentation, I was, okay, this problem, that's actually not a problem micro OS, that's a problem of uh, uh, Sway. This, I, this is actually a problem of Sway. This, uh, so, uh, uh, Sway is kind of a hacker, uh, hacker friendly, so everything is configured by uh, text uh, files, and uh, a lot of things are not done automatically. So, uh, microOS is much uh, more happy with uh, when everything is automatic, and uh, that's the bit of problem. So, again. TLDR for microOS, it just works. Uh, uh, the rest will be uh, small uh, exceptions, but uh, uh, the basic thing that uh, you, you get, uh, because it is built on uh, Tumbleweed, you have uh, daily updates, uh, daily images with uh, updates, uh, which are, uh, you, you better have uh, computer running overnight, so it uh, updates and in the morning you have a fresh computer. And uh, that part, I I have no problem with it, it, it just works. Uh, I was very much afraid of uh, Flatpaks applications because they are very different and how the uh, isolated containers work between themselves and the whole this magic which still seems to me kind of magical 
and uh, how does uh, completely isolated uh, application with uh, a file system somewhere else actually access the local uh, files and yeah, there is a lot of magic behind it, which I would say mostly works. Sometimes, uh, like, uh, I find a f file and it is, in the end, it is somewhere in a run TMP, so some really weird uh, file name, but mostly, it mostly works. Uh, it's actually nice to have uh, applications which are actually really from Mozilla and uh, Thundenberg, which is from Thundenberg people, and LibreOffice, which is from LibreOffice people. Um, nothing, of course, against our packages, but it's kind of good experience. And if you have uh, flat pack page packages from these major players, then they just work. I, I, have, I haven't found uh, anything bad. Part of that, uh, because it is not GNOME, then uh, they expect uh, for something to uh, be able to install some uh, viewers or so, something like that. That doesn't work on the gray beard, but uh, otherwise it's uh, working. The second thing so somebody mentioned it yesterday is Distrobox, because of course I am, I am who I am. Then I don't use that much uh, Flatpak applications outside of uh, Thunderbird and uh, Firefox. Most of my things are uh, done in console, console, and I, Distrobox is awesome. It's a, a really, I, I didn't expect it to, to work as well as it does because it's written in shell. Like, this is the most useful shell script I have ever uh, seen in my life. <laughs> and uh, it actually really works. Um, uh, it's possible to make uh, your own containers and then uh, uh, run it from a container. So, uh, one thing which uh, doesn't work on my uh, gray beard was a connection here. So I'm uh, running from PDF. So I plan to make uh, some demo. Okay, sorry, no demo. But uh, I managed, for example, to package my text editor to the container. And uh, now I'm using uh, the text editor from container, with, uh, which has like all spell checkers and everything inside of the uh, container. So I don't have to uh, install it on my uh, working image. And uh, this is really cool. Uh, when I was preparing the presentation, this is done in uh, Beamer, LaTeX. I could install all those 1,700 or how many packages are in the TechLife uh, in the separate container, which when I will finish, the container will go away. And I, I don't have... Uh, 1,700 uh, packages to update uh, uh, every day, just because uh, I have made presentation half a year ago, which uh, was the, my experience on the normal tumbleweed. This is a, a really great. Um, if I want a testing image to test something, I, I, I just uh, run uh, uh, this Dropbox enter. It creates new uh, image, install whatever. The destroy image is gone, and uh, it's really packaged so that it's a really no hassle. Uh, like dealing with uh, Podman uh, and uh, do it everything manually is a little bit of a problem. This Dropbox really uh, 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 like hide it all away. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a real hack was uh, that I'm using in one container, uh, for example, uh, LSP servers from one container in uh, another container. So NeoVim in uh, my packaging container uses uh, uh, a Lua language server from that editor container. So uh, you can do uh, things like that. That's kind of not really important, but it's just a nice hack because I can. Um, yeah, that's I mentioned that I can isolate things and I don't have to uh, leave a lot of garbage on my system. Uh, 
yeah, that list looks like bigger than the what works, but uh, uh, I made long uh, paragraphs about it. Um, yeah, uh, what is slight problem is that uh, containers which would really nicely replicate our packages are not always created. So, or <laughs> or they are, but uh, I, I have never found them. If you go to the Docker Hub, that's lovely 100,000 uh, Docker containers. And if you don't find it uh, quickly, you will never find it. So <laughs> probably there is somewhere beautiful container which could uh, help all my uh, needs, but yeah. Uh, if the containers are created by the original uh, upstream developers, then usually very good. So I was very much happy with uh, SynThink. It's, it's from them and it just works and it's, uh, I have all syncing uh, done as uh, systemd uh, service. Uh, I have managed to make transmission demon lovely works. Perfect, but for example, to have a post fix where I have to email to three different servers and to overcome various problems, the configuration is not completely trivial, and to find post fix which would be just able to do that, I have I haven't managed to do the, that. The same is uh, Dovecot. Um, so. If we are uh, planning to make an uh, operating system which is based on a lot of containers, I am afraid that there is somewhere, I, I don't know if it's user interface to find them or we don't have them, I, I don't know. But uh, I think there is some work which could be done. Yeah, and uh, especially again, uh, using Distrobox, and running them from this Dropbox, it really helps. And there are some tools where you can export um, automatically the systemd service file. So it uh, helps to run the container as the systemd service is. It's really neat. Uh, yeah. So. Now I expect a lot of questions, accusations, explanations that I'm completely stupid and I have missed something. And uh, go ahead. Or uh, if you have any questions about uh, Python stock proposal, how uh, we don't do anything which you would like to be done, please tell me. Okay, I have a question about Python stack proposal. Uh, there is a proposal that uh, the set of modules for Python 3.11 will be reduced compared to Python 3.6. I know how to add a Python module that is not included in Shli at, at all, but I don't know how to add a module that is built in Shli uh, for 3.6 and I need it for 3.11. Okay, but can you explain? I, I'm, 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 yeah. So if it works in a, a factory, then it should just basically build almost with, with adding one line uh, macro uh, to the top. And how do I edit? Because uh, in factory, it's built for all Pythons, and if I add uh, the the package, it will build for all Pythons. No. No, it won't. You just uh, add w one line to the top, which I cannot uh, show you because I don't have a working computer. And uh, uh, that's it, and it will build just for that uh, Python 3.11. So I will have to modify the package? No. Do you have a specific special version that builds uh, on? There is macro, which is a part of the project configuration. And if it is the defined, then it will just make some magic. And that will do for all Python packages in that project or only for a specific one? For those which have that macro in the top of the spec file. Okay, so I need to modify the package. Yeah. Um, one line change. And I, actually, if you uh, include that uh, spec file modified with that one line change to the factory, it will do nothing because uh, so you, 
you, can, you can do it and it's uh, free for you. Okay, sounds good. Well, uh, I have a question regarding uh, microOS. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed it, but uh, how about OSC? Did you use the OSC utility, and how is there a container for it? Or uh, actually, there is beautiful container. Again, we are in container world by uh, Richard, which includes uh, OSC. So you have uh, like tumbleweed command line tumbleweed with uh, included uh, some like uh, developer tools, including OSC, because of course uh, Richard uses all OSC all the time. <laughs> Very cool, yeah. thank you. Yeah. But uh, like uh, if you are in the distro box, like the host system is read only, but you can have container which is just basically a tumbleweed. So you can install whatever you want to install in tumbleweed and it is there. Yeah, so about that, the only problem uh, of using, uh, oh, there is no problem of using OSC inside DistroBox at all, yeah. and I do it all the time because I'm also daily driving micro OS uh, desktop since three years, well, since, since when it's born. Uh, the only problem is when uh, you want to do local build, so not so all the, oh, It actually works, works for me. <laughs> except when you want to do OSC build, at which point it works, but you need to be in a rootful container. Yeah, so actually, I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm using this Starbox root, uh, rootful uh, uh, container. Yeah, yeah. And uh, at some point, I even we even investigated this a bit, and uh, but I forgot the details of why it's that. Uh, and, uh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. It's just the only. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, not, and not even an issue, but the only things that one might be. And uh, again, this Starbucks lovely works uh, that you you can have uh, root. So. This Starbucks is really awesome. <laughs> Again. <laughs> and it is special script, which kind of still shocks me. OK. Any more questions, or that's it? Thank you.